What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Single Life Edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host, the one and only, Teresa. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Did you hear my voice? No. Ah. <laughs> he went like, ah. He went a little, a little oh my too gosh. high. Wow. I don't know what's happening, but hello, everyone. Hello how, and welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. That was, <laughs> I can't wait to go back and listen. Maybe it wasn't that crazy. It's just, it was it was different. I was sort of off in another mindset <laughs> <laughs> that I wasn't even, I'm sorry to say, I wasn't even really paying attention to you because I kind of know what you're about to say in that spot yeah. of the intro. So I was kind of elsewhere. I missed it, but... I'm looking forward to Well, it wasn't too crazy. It just threw me off because it was a little different. Wow. Sort of just <laughs> let go of it right there. Just let it out. Literally. Cool. Well, <laughs> how are you guys doing? I'm good. You? I'm good. Yeah. Good times. Seemingly so. Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome back to another episode of The Single Life. Are you guys still watching this show? <laughs> <laughs> Who's watching this show? What, what is there even to watch? We, uh, we jinxed it. I hate to say it. I think we you jinxed think it. So? Oh my gosh. We came out here the first three episodes. Oh my gosh. We were like, right. this is the greatest thing I've ever seen on my television screen. Mm-hmm. Forget Fight Club. Mm. Forget What's Fight Club. That's my favorite movie. That's not. What's my favorite movie? Um, The one with like Matt Damon. Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's neck and neck between those two. Okay. Forget Jaws. Forget Jurassic Park. Forget E.T. We were Never like... Never forget Jurassic We were Park. like, the single life <laughs> on Discovery Plus is the greatest piece of entertainment we have ever seen in our entire life. And we said that for three weeks straight. Mm-hmm. Now, 10 weeks into this thing. Oh, my gosh. Kind of regret it. There is... Listen, I did like it at the beginning. The reason why I don't love it anymore is because nothing's happening. Like mm-hmm. make something happen, have someone go on a date or something. You know, what I'll say to that is I'm glad that they're not making things happen because then I can at least believe that this is real. If they were just doing things for entertainment's sake, they would do it and they would make this show wild. But this is more believable because nothing's happening. I guess, but they should have shortened it. Like I know. Stephanie... Still is kind of a virgin. She's not a virgin, but she's still keeping her celibacy. Yep. Debbie still hasn't gotten on the date. Like Natalie, no one wants her. Still whining. Still whining. Uh, I I thought maybe this was going to be the season finale because when I pulled it up on the app, it said like 36 minutes or something. mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, it's like 10 minutes shorter than usual. Maybe this is it. Maybe they ran out of stuff to show. This is the end. But no. Well, they definitely ran out of stuff to well, show. <laughs> but they're like, we're not giving up yet. Not yet. <laughs> we should, but we're not gonna. Oh, my god. We don't mean to get on it too hard. I still enjoy watching it. It's just such a different level of excitement now because I was so excited the first few weeks. Right. Now I'm like, all right, I'll probably be okay. And that's what it's okay. It's a, it's, it's a seven out. It's a 6.5 out of 10. I guess. It's also because we love the before the 90 days so much. Oh, it's right. so good. I, I don't know how you feel guys about it, but it's literally one of my favorite seasons so far. Don't jinx it, okay? I said we, so far. I know, but we've knock, already knock, knock. we've already jinxed the single life. And that's a good point. Maybe when we started the single life season two, we were watching the other way. Have we? I think. What do you mean? I think wasn't the yeah, other way the yeah. So that was garbage. That was garbage. Okay. <laughs> so I think anything compared to that would be amazing. Now that we're actually getting amazing television via Before the 90 Day, this isn't really holding up. I guess. Plus, we have the Silva Sisters back That's true and too. maths. Married at First Sight is delivering. So Let's not bash it too hard because we're going we're gonna to talk we're gonna, about it. We're not going to just drop <laughs> like, it. Well, you know what, guys? After all that, we're kind of done with this. No. There's still some things to talk about. We're going to get into it. Before we do, make sure you guys are following us on social media, on Instagram, at Married to Reality Pod. It's the place to go for the latest news, our scheduling, memes, and most importantly, the place you go to talk to us. Yes, and we love it. I When I look at my phone and I see a message from one of our friends, I say, Teresa, check out that message. 
<laughs> because you are head of social media. I am the head of social media. And then I say, what do they say? What do they want to know? <laughs> what are they saying? Tell me. And then he goes and he checks for himself and he, <laughs> he wants to see what I reply. Yeah. Because he's very interested. But I love when you guys message us. So keep oh, the me messages too. coming. We love talking about the show, about your personal life, about your pets, whatever. We're we're all yours, whatever you have to say. Yeah, totally. So that's at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram. We're also on Facebook now, and a bunch of you guys are coming back over to Facebook. I mentioned it the other day that we lost a bunch of Facebook followers when Facebook slapped our wrists yeah. and said, how dare you use 90 Day Fiance Ugh. in your title? Ugh, Facebook, so, go away. A little bit of a mass exodus on our page, but we had to rebuild the page, and you guys are coming back, so keep coming. We'll have some fun over there. Teresa's tossing around a crazy idea of starting a group. Maybe eventually once we get some of our peeps back, some of you guys back, and we got some nice offers from our friend Missy yeah. to moderate the group. Thanks, Missy. Because that would be a lot. Thanks, Missy. Yeah, we I like the alliteration. We also learned that Missy's name is Melissa. I mean, let's not give too much information out here. <laughs> no, but I was just <laughs> well, going to say. We should share her address while we're out here. <laughs> it reminded me of one of my favorite bad comedies, The Wrong Missy. Yeah, you love that movie. <laughs> I love it. It's so stupid, check but out, I love it. Check out, the, no, The Wrong Missy. Yeah, The right? Wrong Missy. The Wrong Missy. Yeah, yeah, check that out if you haven't, guys. Um, so Facebook, Instagram. Also make sure you guys are following wherever you listen to this podcast, wherever you're listening right now. Just look down and smash that follow button. Yeah, guys, smash it like it's as hot as this season used to be. Ooh. <laughs> 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 there was nothing else hot. Okay. Come on. All right. All right. It's pretty I'm, good. It's pretty good. I'm not going to bust you for that one. I'm, I'm on board. Right? Yeah. Um, last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. It means the world to us. I know we say it every time, but it really does. So thank you in advance. Thank you if you've already left one. And if you haven't, come on. What are you yeah, waiting for? That's why we say it all the time because it really does mean a lot. And we love reading them. And if you want to hear the reviews, you guys have to listen to the main part. Absolutely. That's where John reads the reviews. My fa- one it. of my favorite parts yes, of the episode is reading sure. what you guys have. Some of you guys are hilarious. Some of you guys are just super sweet. But either way. We'll take both. We'll take both. Either way, it's, it's really nice to read. So thank you for that. Okay. That is the housekeeping. House is clean. Should we die into this? Die into it? <laughs> die. <laughs> How, uh, how depressed are you over this this oh turn this season has made? I just You're drunk, like, uh, should we just die? Now? No, I just drunk talk about a this? massive smoothie and I'm just like so. very relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To each their own. Was, yeah, let's let's yeah. dive. Let's dive in. Episode 10 of The Single Life. Let's start with Jesse and Jennifer. <laughs> Still in the same bathing suit. <laughs> this fight. Okay, we pick up where we left off. Jennifer is still swinging on that swing, upset about what Jesse may or may not have said. She thinks he called her a hooker. He kind of did, kind of didn't. Now it's been on three episodes. Three episodes, okay? And forgive me, I forgot for a second that they've strung it along this much. And I, I was thinking, where is Jennifer's daughter? We haven't seen Jennifer's daughter in weeks. And then I was like, Oh, yeah. This is about 15 minutes spread over <laughs> three episodes, yeah. three weeks. Can you imagine if they got into a real fight, mm. how long this would be? It would be a spinoff. A season. 90-day fight. It would be <laughs> 90 days long of them fighting, 90-day fight. Because this isn't a real fight. This is BS. It is. It's just Jennifer's being stubborn, and all she wants is for him to apologize. He's saying... It came out wrong. He didn't mean what she heard, obviously. Right. He's refusing to apologize at first. And in the context of a three-episode story arc, it seems crazy. Mm-hmm. But in the context of a real, a real-time a real fight where you know, oh, it's been 15 minutes, that's pretty normal. It's like you get into a fight, you say your piece, you storm off, you cool down for 10 minutes, and you go back and you apologize. And... If we watch this play out in real time, that's about what happened. Yeah, I think so too. And let's, let's talk about it. So still in the same bathing suit, as we said, Jennifer wants an apology. So Jesse comes over. But before he comes, he tells the camera that he's a little skeptical about the relationship because of this fight. Mm-hmm. Because how Jennifer acted basically over nothing, over something that he tried to explain and say, hey, like, 
that I didn't mean that. I just meant like you make money on social media. I make money on social media. Come on. Like you are the one who should understand. Yeah. It was a really easy thing to explain, but he didn't explain it very well. He did, but she just Not didn't want to hear it. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, yes, I understand her point of view too. It did sound like he basically called her a hooker. Yeah, in so many words. Yeah, but I'm saying like, it's just a misunderstanding. In this concept, when he basically was just trying to tell her, you make money on social media too. You should be the one who understands that that's how I make my money. I promote places. I have girls in my, in my posts. Right. You know it. Why are we even fighting? Right. Right. <laughs> because of that, we are in this luxury beach resort. Just stop. Just yeah. enjoy this. Which, to that point... Three episodes, haven't seen them enjoy it. We haven't seen them in the room. Do we see it? No, we saw them in the room in her hometown. I when they did think that so, yeah. tantric doggy style yoga, downward doggy yeah. style. We've never seen the room of this resort. Well, they, no, they did the yoga this time when they oh, got yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, so that's about all we saw of this resort so Then far. They, they went on a boat and ended up at this place. That's what I'm and saying. And have been fighting. That's what I'm saying. Since they got to Luxury Beach Club, there hasn't really been much luxury. Not really, it's no. has been a lot of arguing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're trying to iron things out now. And Jesse's like, I really care about you. I'd never call you a whore. And Jennifer's like, not good enough. And she basically asked for an apology. She said, I need you to apologize. I need a better escupa. And I need a better so es- he did. Escupa. That's, <laughs> what I, that's what I say when I go for a gelato. And I'm right? like, can I get a strachatella? And they're like, sure. And they get, I'm like, I need a better escupa of that. Yeah, okay. Make it a double escupa while we're at it. John learned the word strachatella from me. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying I invented the word. <laughs> no, I didn't either. But it's a fa- famous ice cream. I think it's Italian, but Czech people love it. Gelato? No, stracciatella. Oh, we'll explain it for our friends who aren't so cultured. I think it's... Uh, I'm not either, guys. So it's funny. I do not like vanilla ice cream, but I think stracciatella is like a milk ice cream with pieces of chocolate. Oh, I thought I don't it was think like a it's- swirl. I thought it was a chocolate vanilla swirl. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of vanilla, but... It's the vanilla that I like. I do not like regular vanilla ice cream. Anyways, it looks like a cow. Mm-hmm. So I call cow stracciatellas. Oh, yeah. It is a variety of gelato consisting of milk-based ice cream filled with fine mm-hmm. irregular shavings of chocolate. Mm-hmm. It's That's free, what I yeah, from Italy. Look yeah, at you. Literally, I said that. Look at you. I know, but I trust Google way more than I trust you. Really? I barely trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I trust nobody. <laughs> barely trust you. But yeah, it's a milk ice. That's why I love it. It's it's not vanilla. It's a little treat. It's a, when we go on vacation, we treat ourselves to a little gelato if we can. Yes. This is what Jesse and Jennifer should be doing instead of yeah. arguing. <laughs> a little gelato. For sure. Get over it. Get a little strachatella. <laughs> so Jennifer's like, not good enough. I need a better escupa. I need an apology worthy of my entire family. She's like, I need an apology that'll make my ancestors proud. Mm. Right? So Jesse's like, mm, okay, all right. He gets up, he hugs her, and he just goes, sorry. Now, uh, let's go get ready for snorkeling, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was good enough. <laughs> yeah, it was good enough. That's all it took. And she's like, oh, I forgot we had snorkeling at 3.15. We should probably go. <laughs> We're going to be late. We don't get a refund. Yeah. And they are snorkeling, kind of. Hugging, well, no. hugging in the water. Well, like you're missing the point when Jesse said, I like the fire, but if you want to hit me, do it in the bedroom. Oh, my gosh. It got very sexual very quickly. It went from hating each other to very intense language around sexuality. Classic. Right. It, they do seem like one of those couples that would have makeup sex. Oh, for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, then they go snorkeling, which basically turns into an underwater sex act. Yeah, like that's not how you snorkel. Where is the fish? That's not how you snorkel. Yeah. Jesse's show me the fish and me, the crabs. Show me the blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's like, oh, yeah. Is blowfish the one that's like like a round fish? Uh, that like blows up? Yeah, I think it inflates. Yeah, I think it inflates. Right? Teresa is miming a blowfish. 
right now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go from blowfish to catfish once we get to our next couple. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We'll, not, we'll, not the next couple. The next single. Yes. The next thruple, actually, which we're not there yet, but not it is, yet. has become a, quite mm-hmm. the thruple. I mean, support is important. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get there in a second. So cut to nighttime with Jesse and Jennifer, set up a romantic dinner on the beach, and he carries her from the sidewalk, from like the boardwalk to the table on the beach. But the way he carried her, at least to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a woman. I don't know if women like this. It looked like he was like rescuing her from a fire. He had her like thrown over her sh- his shoulder. Like it did not look pleasant, enjoyable, romantic <laughs> whatsoever. I mean, he tried. He Would said, you like that? Uh, probably not. I like when you give me piggyback rides. See, that to me is at least a little more romantic. It's like, yeah. come on, hop on. Is right? it? Yeah, you could at least be comfortable. There's no way Jennifer was comfortable in that. Next time we go out to eat, you're going to piggyback ride me from the car to the restaurant. I'll do it before dinner, not after dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that well, strong. <laughs> are you saying that I eat a lot? I'm just joking. We I bo- do, we but both I do, do. We, we do both, both eat a yeah. lot, yeah. Okay. Jesse basically said... He's hoping that they can have a great time, like finally. Right. Well, that's that's usually a good thing when you're on vacation. That's always my hope. I hope we have a good time. Tell me the one time we didn't have a good I'm time. I'm being sarcastic. Mm. I'm being sarcastic. So, okay. So when he's there, when they're there, he starts talking about fire. Speaking of. He's like giving another fire. motivational speech. Like, We're sitting in a fire. We are the fire <laughs> and we've been experiencing so much fire. It's like, you're not sitting in a fire. Those are tiki torches, Jesse. Those are for the mosquitoes. I think he said we're sitting around the fire, which isn't true. Either, either. way. Yeah. You're sitting next to slightly more romantic citronella candles. It's not, <laughs> it's not some romantic setting. I mean, it looked nice. It looked let's, okay. Let's give him okay. that. It looked let's okay, but that. it wasn't worthy of a, we're sitting around a fire. We are the fire. We're experiencing fire. Listen, he is a motivational speaker. He tries to be. And he loves it. He tries I thought to be. that's one of his businesses. Like, one, yeah. One of many. One of many. So the producer asks, if you had to compare the other's sexual energy to an animal, what would Jennifer be? Mr. A dragon. Mr. Fire says dragon, mm. right? Like a fire breathing dragon. So Jennifer says, Jesse embraces me how I am, like a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how huh? to take it. Jesse's like, fountain of love, fountain of water, fountains of Wayne, my favorite band, fountains of fluid. What? What are we talking about here, I, folks? I don't know. What? I, mean, I have an idea. <laughs> Is she talking about her orgasms? I think so. Really? I don't think so. Okay. Like a fountain. Uh, like lay a tarp down, fountains of fluid. Yes. Okay. It doesn't Just, sound too sexual when you put it this way. It's, no, it puts the fire out, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> they're both feeling better about the fight. They're feeling like they're in a better place. Jennifer's happy they could work through their issues. And Jesse goes, I want to share this life with you, baby. This, You know, I know we almost broke up 19 minutes ago, (laughs) but I want to spend my life with this fountain, this fountain of love. And Jennifer's loving it. She's loving it. Like, think back to Jennifer and Tim that she just wasn't into that. Like, now she's... She worships Jesse. Minus does that she? little fight. Yes. I don't know about that. Oh, she does. To me, she seems like a strong, independent woman who is happy with Jesse. No, no, no. That's what she says she is. And I she is. She I believe she is. She takes care of her daughter. She rolls on her own. That's awesome. But I think she is really into Jesse. Like she really enjoys his company. And as she said, she loves him now. Wow. But I really believe that. She went from like b- being with, as Jesse says, Kaka. Being with Kaka, <laughs> she's the boss, right? right? She just throws him around and whatever she wants happens. But Jesse, like he is the alpha male now. She's not. Hmm. Okay. All right. For sure. So Jesse goes, all right, I like where things are, but I do have more questions about Kaka. 
He calls him Kaka here. He goes, I want to know what that is. And Jack is like, yeah. It's a dump. Oh my God. Why would you use that word? Well, I didn't want to say poop. That's way better than really? dump. Yeah. <laughs> dump like, is quantitative. Like when you say dump, it sounds huge. It sounds a, 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 like a lot of poop. I mean, if you had just said poop, it's almost cute. Like a poop. Like yeah, a little. Yeah, but Kaka's not that cute. So. Oh my God. I can't believe you said the D word. <laughs> 30D over here. <laughs> okay. I feel like guys <sighs> always say I'm gonna I'm gonna take a dump. Maybe guys do. You don't need to repeat yourself. Come I on. I mean I mean You're a lady, aren't you? Yeah. Act like one. I don't I don't even poop. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on from this caca talk. So Jesse's like, I wanna know what that is. Jennifer says, what it was. And Jennifer says, I wanna show you that I'm here for you. And what I say is the truth. So if you want, I'll call Kakwa with you. We can talk to him. And Jesse's like, hell yeah. Jesse loves a conference call. He's like, hell yeah, let's call Kakao. <laughs> he sort of <laughs> tries a little bit now to get his name right because he's feeling a little bit better he's about like, it. He's Kaka, Kakao. Yeah, conference him in. Let's go. Let's find out. Let's get to the bottom of this. But he doesn't speak English, does he? A little bit. He spoke a little English. I think he. Uh, he's not gonna. He's not gonna speak enough to get himself in or out of trouble. Jennifer is gonna be steering the conversation. Yeah, but I feel like Jennifer wants to prove something to Jesse, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't see it making a difference. It's like we talk about all the time when the parents don't speak the language of the fiance or the spouse like with Johnny and Ella or with you and I mm. it's it's up to the person you or Johnny to translate it's gonna be up to Jennifer to translate yeah and so if Kaka's like oh yeah I still want to bang you Jennifer's gonna be like oh yeah he said he used to like <laughs> me but he's over it we're just friends now but also he's, they can on. watch it later sure but in the moment I don't think anything's gonna get solved unless I don't know unless Kaka gets one of Mike's Tamagotchis I also think that Jesse has a little knowledge of the language, so he would understand had sex, did not have sex. Like those little things I think he can pick up. Plus, you can pick up on people's energy. Yeah. If one is lying, you can pick up on it. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's move on. I just on. sounded like Darcy, the energy. The energy, manifest it, yeah. Oh my gosh, um, I have a lot to say about the sisters, but <laughs> I'll save it for the other part because, Yeah, oof. yeah. okay. Oof. Let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about Debbie because they made it to San Diego. The thruple made it to San Diego and Deb's in the hotel room with Audrey picking out her outfit for the date, feeling old lady sexy. I've read an article on the New York Times about people having sex after 70. <laughs> it's a thing. I would hope so. It's a thing. Well, yeah. Why would it stop? You don't, you don't give up. Why would? Yeah. I mean, 70 is the new 50, I feel like. I think my grandma haven't banged anyone in like 30 years. Oh, oh my gosh. I know there's not really much to do. talk about with this episode, <laughs> yeah. but we don't have to talk about that. No, we don't. But I think like a lot of people are doing things like this and it's good. Yeah, well, you shouldn't Keep stop. Fresh. Why would you stop? Just don't put out your hip. Right. Debbie sixty nine talking about the fuck zone. Like you don't need to and read the new. You don't need to read the New York Times to learn that seventy year olds are still banging. I mean, I did read it, but <laughs> so, she's feeling old lady sexy. I don't know if we found out any more information about where they're going, what she needs to dress for, what type of occasion, but her plan is to have Colt drive her to the date. And I think Audrey's tagging along too. I think they all are yeah, going. Why not? Audrey's come this far. So she's she's coming with. They go downstairs. Colt is sitting in the lobby looking like the lead singer of Blues Traveler. What's Blues Traveler? You don't know the band Blues Traveler? No. Oh my gosh. Um Why you wanna give me the run and around and in a show file way to speed. No? Nah. nah. Okay. You try. It's like it in, suck it in. If you're in tin tin or in boiling, <laughs> then that's we're moving. Like, Is this you know cut, cut now, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> where did you go from? Where did you go? No. No. It's Blues Traveler. Oh. 
They were pretty solid. John, it was a John Popper reference that clearly was lost on you. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of JP. So it has nothing to do with Cotton Eye Joe. No, but now that you say it, it somewhat sounds similar, sure. It was my favorite song when I was like six. Blues Traveler was a huge band in the 90s, I want to say. You, if I played you the songs, you would know. Maybe. Yeah. Colt looking like, if Colt had a harmonica on his lap, you'd be like, is that, is that John Popper? <laughs> is that, who, what? <laughs> I'll show, I'll show you photos. Anyways, he looks terrible. <laughs> Classic. That goatee or whatever that facial hair <laughs> of his is, it's yeah. horrible. If I was Vanessa, I would shave him in his sleep, including the hair. She's like, cut it all out. I've told you the story about my grandfather trying to cut my dad's hair. Mm-hmm. Right? I think your dad said it too. For those of you who didn't tune into that podcast really quickly, my dad had hair down to his back when he was in college, quite the hippie musician mm-hmm. type. I can see that. And his dad, this super straight shooter of a guy, pharmacist, owned his own pharmacy, was like, come on, you hippie. You got to get rid of that hair. And my dad's like, absolutely not. This is cool. I love it. So one night my dad was sleeping and he woke up to his dad, my grandfather, cutting his hair in the middle of the night with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can't but make yeah, that that's what That's the kind of shit Vanessa should pull off. Or maybe, as we all know, they like to do all these sex games. Just play it like a hair salon. Like a sexy hair salon. Oh. Just be like, called would be the customer and Mm -hmm. Vanessa would be pretending she is the hairdresser. Okay. Just freaking cut his hair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to really make him that much better. That's not his biggest problem. Uh, I think. It's one of them. One of them, yeah. But I think it will make him look slightly better. All right. Slightly less creepy. He looks creepy. I know. Okay. So they're off. They're going to their group date. We don't know where. With who, right? We don't know who this guy is. We don't know what they're up to, but I hope, fingers crossed, next week we get some answers. And I'm curious to see if he's going to show up or that's another, whoops, no one, no one came. Yeah, because they didn't show Deb on the previews, which is scary. Like, mm. what are you guys going to show us? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they didn't show Natalie on the previews. We need Natalie. Natalie is pure entertainment. Yeah, we need Natalie. We want Debbie to get some action. Come on. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. All right. Let's take a quick time out and we'll be back in a second. Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome back. We are here with one final single, Sinjin. Sinjin from Connecticut. <laughs> I was trying to think of his last name. Is it South Colchester? South Africa. Is it Colchester? I think so, yeah. I love how we're trying to introduce him like nobody knows who he is. Sinjin, 31, used to live in Connecticut Ew, with Tanya. he's older. I have 31 in my notes. I think he's 32 or 33. Okay, well, time marches on for all of us. Last I noted, he was 31. But he's in the shower. He's singing in the shower. And I forgot he wanted to be an opera singer. Remember when oh he, was, my gosh, you're right. he was having that dinner, that lunch with Tanya when they were in New York and she was like, what are you going to do with your life? He's like, I don't know. Maybe firefighter, maybe opera singer. And he can kind of sing. I guess. And also, yeah, I have 31 in my notes too. Okay. So how dare you call me out? I thought he was older. Come on. Anyways. I know what Stracciatella is and I know how old Sinjin is. Trust me. Okay, I know what Strachatella is. That's true. But you do know how old St. is. That's I'll true. give okay. you this one. So he's showering. He's getting fresh. He's getting ready for his date with Kira. I didn't think he showers. I know. Well, he doesn't wash his hair. Probably not. No, he was wearing always, oh, that shower cap. It always looks very oily. I know. You think he should wash it, but I don't know. You can overwash your hair. I used to shampoo my hair twice a day, and everyone's like, don't. Don't yeah, do, oh my gosh. Don't do it twice a day. You should do I it don't like know. every other day. At well, what about when I come home from the gym? Wash it with water. Uh, I, I'm, sh- I'm down to shampooing once a day. You guys can yell at me if I deserve it. If there's any hairdressers, hairstylists, barbers listening, let me know. But I do, I gotta, after I work out, I'm dripping in sweat. I want to shampoo it. Mm. Okay? Okay. All right. Anyway, he was wearing a shower cap. He wasn't 
getting it wet even. But he didn't have time to style it. Maybe he was not. going on a date. So he finishes up. He like fist bumps the mirror, which uh, that says a lot about a person. Listen, it's better if he dads the way he's like, okay, dude, you look good. You look confident. Let's put on the lucky shirt and go better than our friends like Darcy and Stacy and who, who else is on the show that's like very self-conscious, just like keeps talking about how beautiful they are. Oh, Natalie. Natalie. It's like, no, if you have to say it out loud over and over, that's the opposite. Yeah, but do a mental fist bump then. Just be like, all right. I all guess, right, I but that's Sinjin. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Yeah, so he comes out to talk to his buddy, Aaron. Wait a minute. You never look at yourself and be like, okay, looking good or could have been better, but I'm just going on a walk. I'm just going to roll. I yeah, always do that. But I've never fist bumped the mirror. Nah, me neither. After feeling good about myself. Me neither. But I always kind of look at myself and be honest. I'm, I'm always honest. Oh, I'm very honest internally. I'm, I'm not yeah. punching glass over it. True. So True. he goes out. Sits down with Aaron, wants to calm the nerves a little bit before the big date. Kind of was shocked there was no alcohol involved here. I mean, he's trying to be sober for the date. Yeah, this is the first time I think we've seen him without a cocktail. And this is the time I would expect him to have the cocktail. Well, he has to drive there too. Um, I guess he drove. But still you can have one cocktail, calm the nerves. Yeah, I guess. Right? So he's nervous because... His dating history is pretty non-existent. Yeah. Besides Tanya, he hasn't really dated. Which is a good thing. Which, what but did you, you do before Tanya? But you're married. Oh, yeah. before Tanya, he, come on. He was slinging it left and yeah, right. Yeah, I think so too. Behind the bar in South Africa. Mm. He listened to their meet cute story. It was like, oh, this foreigner came to my bar, started chatting her up, and she ended up living with me for months. <laughs> it's like this guy was slinging it left and right. He... He oh, probably never I went on remember. a proper date in his 31 years. This is probably his first proper date. I remember. Like, the roommates hated it. Like, why is she living with us? Like, she, they met and she never left. Those roommates were the best. Remember the when best. we met yeah. them? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Such characters. We love them. Yeah. So now he's super nervous, doesn't really know how to date. But Aaron's hopeful because he's like, you guys, you really connected. The other night when you guys met, I saw something there. You guys are really connected. I mm -hmm. feel good about it. I'm hopeful for this. And, you know, Sinjin just wants to meet someone who accepts him the way he is. Someone who's not going to try to change him, which is what you should be looking for right. when you're looking for someone. Unless you're a POS. What does it mean? A piece of shit. Oh. Unless you have, you know, <laughs> no drive, no good intentions, nothing to do in your life. Like find someone that can change you for the better. I guess, but I feel like when you meet someone, the person should like you the way you are. If on the way as, or as you grow together, things change. Like maybe, oh, your lifestyle isn't as healthy as mine. Why don't you get on the healthy train? We can work out together. Choo like little choo. things like this, right? Yeah. But not to be like, Choo choo oh. is also a food pun. Oh, is it? You said, well, you said healthy. Train. Oh, yeah. I said choo choo, and like you chew your food. Smart. Jokes are so good when you have to explain them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I know. Really I interrupted into you for a bad train. Pun. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, um, you just were saying if you meet someone, don't try to change them immediately. Yeah, yeah. But if you're eating healthy and that person's eating poorly and you want to get them on the healthy train, it choo was an choo choo. It was an example of sure. how a positive change can happen. But it, it shouldn't be like, oh, okay, we're on the first date. You are eating French fries. Get out of here. Like, no. Like, if right. you want to date me, you have to eat a salad next time. No. Like, things develop, right? Right. right. Tanya was just trying to change things. Like, oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. It's like, uh, like no. That's right. not how you accept the other person. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> the way... The one he's looking for or the way he's looking for someone, that's the healthy way to do this. Agreed. Did you see Aaron's tattoo on his I arm? was trying to read it, but oh. I couldn't. Did you read it? Vidi Vidi Vici. 
It's like something about life, something, something. I thought it was. It seems like Caesar's Yeah, I think it's, quote. Ca- it's I think Caesar's it's quote. I came, I saw, I conquered. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. I think it was either that or it was his Starbucks order, like venti venti green tea or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, who puts vidi vidi vici on your arm? What does that mean? Tell us, Aaron. What is that story? What did you conquer? I think he was young and dumb. Listen, I have three giant stars on my back. You sure do. And... Uh, there is this like squoosh, swoosh around it, which was I'm unpl- I drew the stars. They're connected. I gave it to the you tattoo. You drew those stars? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I j- gave it to the tattoo artist. I'm like, I just want the stars to be disconnected. He literally put it on my back. And then he's like, oh, it's a little plane. Do you want me to add like a little cloud around it? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Literally oh didn't even know what's going on oh until I saw it. Now I have a freaking... I don't even know what it is. It looks like... It's a shooting star. It's like three stars in a bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. But it's definitely uh, not my proudest moment. Luckily, it's on my back. Right. You can't see it. You can see it sometimes. I see it all the time. <laughs> all right. Let's get Singe into the social hall. That's where he's going on his date. It's a video game bar. It's like an arcade bar. It's, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, I would not go on a first date there. Oh, I disagree. I disagree. I wouldn't get the salmon there. But oh, I was just going to say. <laughs> I, would go, I would go to a place like that. I think it's a great icebreaker type place where, okay, if the conversation is not going that well, we can go play a game. Yeah, but it wouldn't sit well with me because you know that I don't like playing games. Oh, we've thrown the darts around. Yeah, when I get hammered and then... Like, you like foosball. I do love foosball. Okay. I love foosball, right. but I get very um, competitive. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fun. I on love date. foosball. But you remember once we went to Connecticut and I met some of your friends for the first time and his girlfriend and we went to the arcade and I was not loving it. We went to the arcade. Oh, we went to a bowling alley, oh, Teresa. Oh, bowling. I like bowling. We went to the arcade room at a bowling alley. No, that's terrible. Bowling's fun. That's terrible. I like bowling, even though I suck. I do like that. Yeah. Okay, so they're, or Sinjin's at Social Hall. He got there first, so he's sitting alone. Did you see him checking his BO? Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, like, imagine she walked in right when he was smelling his armpits. So- some people don't believe in deodorants. He seems like the guy that would be au naturel. And I had a, I have a friend. When I was an au pair, I had a small group of other au pairs. One was, one was from Spain. Yeah. One was from Mexico, and one was from Israel. The girl from Spain, she's super nice. Sounds like the start of a joke. <laughs> well, it was great because we all tried to speak our broken English. And I love that the Spanish girl and the Mexican girl never spoke Spanish around us. See, yeah, it's very respectful. And we were like besties. Like, Inclusive. Eventually, the Israeli girl kind of left our group and joined the Israeli group. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, we are still in touch here and there. But our Spanish friend who is from the northern of Spain, from the Basque country, okay. right? She didn't use deodorant and she told us that she doesn't believe in that. She thinks it gives you cancer. Well, they're meanwhile they're, smoking a pack a day. That's what she was doing. Yes. Yeah. No. There's definitely and guys, I don't know what I'm about to say here, but the aluminum or something yeah. in deodorant, I don't think is the best for you. There are natural deodorants. Mm-hmm. I worked with a woman who didn't wear deodorant, and and not, not good. I was just gonna say that me and the Mexican girl, it got to the point that we had a sleepover. It was really hot. And oh it was just so smelly. And I was like, I, her name was, the Mexican girl's name was Araceli. So I was like, Araceli, I can't take it. And I love Ichaso. She's our friend. Like she's our bestie. I cannot take it. And Araceli was like, I cannot take it either. We have to talk to her. Oh and I'm my like, gosh. you have to talk. I'm like, you have to talk to her because you just have a way of saying things. She was like this super sweet girl. Wait, who had to say, who had to break the news? Araceli. Where is she from? Mexico. Who's the smelly girl? The one from Spain. Got it. Okay. okay. So we did tell her and I let Araceli to take the lead. Sure. And yeah. Stay out of that one. And our friend was basically saying, I know, but I just don't believe in that. I think it's bad for you. And I'm just, she's like, I shower all the time. I try my best, but it's hot. <laughs> what about like perfume or something? No. Nothing? She was very natural. I mean, I- 
listen, I respect that, but if you smell, you smell. I know, but it was not funny, but she was aware of it. She was just like, I'm not doing it. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Okay. So, Sinjin's there. Who knows if he smells. Kira walks in. Did she have pink hair before? I don't think so, but I do like the pink hair. I know. I was like, don't get any ideas. She's a very pretty girl. I think Kara's very pretty. Don't love the pink hair on her. I do. Hmm. Okay. I mean, she's very young. She can still pull it off. Right. But she I mean, I can pull it off too. She doesn't need it. Why don't you want me to get my pink hair? You have beautiful, natural blonde hair. I get highlights. You get highlights, <laughs> but even if you don't, you still have beautiful hair naturally. Thank you. Why go and put some color in it? Because it's going to wash out within a month. Yeah, okay. I would just want, love to see how it looks. All right. Well, maybe next Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. they're together. It's a bit awkward at first. The chemistry that was there the night before is not there nah. now. Right? And Sinjin tells the camera, I usually like dark haired women, but... I'll go for a pink haired woman every now and then. I don't see them together because no. since you need someone who's more natural, more yeah. like out there. Yeah. Kira definitely looks like she showers twice a day. Sinjin, not so much. Not so much. So they go, they play a couple games. They play some darts. Finally, no axe throwing on this show. Remember when Danielle went on oh her axe gosh. throwing day? She had to tell Robert that she smelled. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe Sinjin was worried he'd have to tell Kira that, that he smelled. That was out of control. That was, I mean, the single first life single one. eye was great. This one was too for the first yeah. eight episodes. But oh my gosh, no more axe throwing. We're on to darts. Sinjin blows it with the darts, so they go and sit down to eat. And they get a they get a salmon. They both order salmon. All right. I don't eat salmon, so I cannot judge. But let's say I do like tuna. You like tuna too. Mm -hmm. I only get tuna at nice restaurants or seafood places. I would yeah. never at get fish arcade. anywhere else. <laughs> Getting Dude. fish at an arcade. You're really rolling the dice there on a Dude, first date. Go for like chicken tenders or something. People cannot screw up. It probably came in a bag. Yeah. Hey. Don't, get, don't get salmon. It shows that they're both adventurous. I guess. They both order the salmon and Sinjin's like, what? Same meal? <laughs> Soul mates? Salmon mates? Are we salmon mates right now? He couldn't believe that they both got it. They both like salmon. I can't I, believe it either. John, we Teresa. both dislike salmon. Yeah, soulmates. 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 Soul is a different <laughs> fish, so that actually doesn't work. Boss? Soul. It, soul is a fish. Oh. I think it's, I don't know how to spell it. S-O-L-E? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Moving on from the fish. Kara starts talking about she just got out of a relationship and it's been really hard, which is a red flag topic to bring up on your first date. She's also 23. Dude, just enjoy your life. Yeah. So uh, Sinjin, you were talking about Jesse being a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. Sinjin starts going full ash. He's going full Jesse, full ash. He's like, relationships shouldn't cause anxiety, actually. Actually, they should relieve it. Actually, like sexually release it, actually. <laughs> and I'm like, Sinjin, all of a sudden a pro at relationships, giving advice left and right here. And Kira says she's just taking it slowly with dating, but, you know, she's definitely guarded yes. because of her past. But she needs someone who will make her believe in love again. She wants a best friend. Mm -hmm. She wants a best friend. And what else does she want in the next five years? Oh, she wants some babies. Uh, oh. Sinjin's like, oh, okay. Well, see, actually one of the main reasons Tanya and I split up was this very thing. But then he says, you know, I don't want a kiss at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for kids at the moment. Meanwhile, he told Tanya he doesn't want to have kids Ever and the producers call him out on this. I love They're like, Sinjin, you literally left Tanya <laughs> because she wanted to have kids, and you said, I never want to have kids. Now you're saying you don't want to have kids at the moment. So you're either leading Kira on saying, Oh, eventually I might want to have kids, or you actually do want to have kids, but you did not want to have kids with Tanya. I've told you all exactly what this is. 
And not in this exact example, but I told you when Josh was about to go vegan for Natalie, I told you what this is. He wants to bang? This is a guy who's willing to say anything. <laughs> I guess. So he can bang. And as soon as he gets that, he's going to be like, absolutely no kids. I guess. Come I on. mean, you also don't know. At 31, you don't know. And I can't understand. Like, I didn't think about kids until, I don't know, like a year ago. <laughs> but like the older you get, the more you are open to the idea, right? You change and then you find your partner. Not mm -hmm. a year ago when we got married. Probably I started thinking about it. But he's still young. If right. he says, I don't want to have kids right now. In five years, he can be like, oh, hell yeah, I want to have kids. No, I think it's very smart of him to say, I can't predict the future. Who knows yeah. in five years? But as long as he's honest, that's all that matters. If Kira exactly. says, I want, I want kids today, he needs to be like, no, not today. But who knows in the future? Unless he really doesn't want kids and then be honest about that. Because, again, don't string mm -hmm. a woman along. To the point where she's too old for, for kids. For sure. And there are so many people who don't want to have kids. And I know several couples who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They don't have kids. They never had kids. And they're having a great oh, yeah. relationship. They're living their lives. They travel. They build tiki bars in their backyard. Kids are not for everyone. No. And I think if you understand this and you kind of make peace and be like, okay, my spouse doesn't want kids. I don't want kids Two, it can work. Yeah, for it sure. It can work. For sure, as long as you guys are on the same page. So the date ends. Sinjin walks Kira out. Kira said she had a great time. Sinjin's like, I'm intrigued. Uh, I would ask her on another date. But he doesn't know what zone he's in. Am I in the friend zone or the fuck zone? So when they're outside, Sinjin goes for it. He just says, had a good time. Would love to see you again. And Kara's like, oh, my God. Yeah, totally. Twinsies. Totally. Like, totally. Let's hang out again. Let's, let's, let's do it. And so Sinjin tells the camera, well, now I know I totally made the right choice leaving <laughs> Tanya. What? This dude goes on one lukewarm date. Oh, my God. And he's like, I should have left Tanya years ago. <laughs> you see me out here sharing salmon, throwing darts? Look at me. Yeah, that's. I don't know. <laughs> I still see him more with soon. Tanya than with Kira. Oh, I don't see him with Kira at all. No, I just just because I think Kira can do better. I think Kira can do better. And I, <laughs> I really, I think Salmon's probably the only thing they have in common. Not even better. I like Sinjin's. But Sinjin's very like a free spirit dude. He doesn't care. And I, I see Kira to be like, okay, in five years, I'm going to have kids. I want to have a husband. I want to buy a house. Like someone who wants things in order. Right, right. Uh, Totally agree. Maybe we'll see another date between the two of them. I don't think we're going to get the wedding special. I don't think so either. But I want to see some more action. This is episode 10. Sinjin's finally doing something. Yeah. It took him six episodes to leave Tanya. It took Jesse and Jennifer three episodes to get over <laughs> a misunderstanding. Oh, my gosh. This thing is just... Out of control. Uh, but I'm excited for the tell-all. All right. That's always good. Got to look forward to something. That's always good. Okay. That's it. That's the episode. Sorry if we went on about too many personal, personal anecdotes, but we had to fill out the time mm -hmm. with something here. Otherwise, our podcast would be like 10 minutes long. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed. Hope you listen to the other podcast we're doing before the 90 days. We're doing Darcy and Stacy. We are doing Married at First Sight. So check those out. Make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Good time over there. Message us, slide into our DMs. Yes. And make sure you guys follow the podcast wherever you're listening. So easy to do. Look down and smash that follow button. Yeah, guys. Smash it like it's as hot as hopefully the next episode it's going to be because we need Bring some the heat. action. Bring the heat. Yeah. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, press that plus sign button. Okay. <laughs> guys. I love how you, you're trying so hard to make it a thing. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for the reviews. I've said it all. Have you said it all? I've said everything you I said, possibly could about this episode. You said more than enough. All right. That means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.